Hi, this is Oliver from Trivium Financial Group, and today I'm going to show you how to compute an XMIRR. We're going to provide you with a VBA function that you can use very easily, like any other uh, X function that Excel provides, such as XIRR or XMPV. And we're also going to run you through a manual calculation to show you exactly how it's done. Uh, because our VBA formula for it reflects the calculation itself that we do in Excel. Now, one of the reasons we do this is because Excel provides a lot of time value for money functionality. You have the IRR and the XIRR, which allows you to sort of compute the IRR with irregular dates. And you have the exact same thing for the MPV function, but you don't have that for the modified investment rate of return, the MIRR, which will be our focus today. And I'd like to point out that this is done by two people, uh, myself, Oliver, and my partner, Ed Bodmer. This is actually our first post and first video for Trivium Financial Group. We've just started up. But anyway, let's jump into it. So. I'm going to go to our spreadsheet over here and you're going to see some checks at first. We'll see an annual check and an MIRR equals our calculated MIRR. Um, both of these are going to be false because down here you'll see that 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, 3 months, that's wrong. That's not a year. Um, Excel's MIRR function will not work with that. If I put this back to 12 months, we have the MIRR correct down here, as you can see, and also the correct XMIRR. The XMIRR is our homegrown formula. And one of the things about creating formulas in VBA is that if I want to do it here, um, equals XMIRR, what I cannot do, or what I don't have, rather, is the guidance that Excel provides. And let me show that a different way. If I were to say XIRR, I'll have values, dates, and guess, right? But for XMIRR, I don't have that. So up here, this is our guidance. Uh, we need the cash flow series, we need the dates, we need the borrowing rate, and we need the reinvestment rate. So I'm going to go down to our cash flows. These are just inputs. Um, all of our inputs are denominated in blue. Uh, comma, dates. So we'll go down and take the dates. Now the borrowing rate. This is also called the finance rate. Um, reinvestment rate, 9%. And you have your 15.3% XMIRR for this series of cash flows. Um, I'm going to delete that because we've already got that right down here. But if I modify this, say I want to take month five to three months instead of 12, you're going to notice a couple of things happen. First off, up here in the annual check, um, that's going to go false. And that's correct. We used a COUNTIF formula to say that each of these is equal to 12, and um, it's not. There's a 3 in there. And so that throws off the dates completely. And what that will also do is throw off the MIRR. Uh, you won't get an accurate output for that. We did a full calculation of it, and I'm going to walk you through the calculation of the modified investment rate of return. It's actually not as complex as you might think. Most people get lazy and just rely on the Excel formulas, but um, our manual calculation down here takes the same steps that our VBA function does, and I'll touch on that in just a moment. So we're going to go down, and as you can see, we have a lot of the same well, we basically brought down the inputs. We have the cash flows and dates and months and period from above. We have that three that throws it off a little bit. That gives us kind of a problem to solve, and that's cool. And I go into a little, a little bit of more detail on this in the blog post, and there's a link to that below the video. But the first thing we're going to look at is how do we create the present value and the future value. The MIRR, 
as a formula equals the future value of positive cash flows uh, discounted by the reinvestment rate divided by the present value of negative cash flows discounted by the borrowing rate and we have both of those down here and that's raised to one divided by the number of periods that you'd like to sort of use for accuracy if you were doing this on a monthly basis that's cool we're using days here uh, we're using days and a 365 day convention because that is the most accurate unit of analysis and so future value divided by positive value raised to one divided by the 365 minus one um, that's how you complete the formula and so days from beginning of analysis uh, what this allows us to do is we're going to be using these numbers with the daily borrowing rate to calculate the present value of negative cash flows. So we do that by creating switches. Uh, up here, I've used some conditional formatting just to make it look pretty, but right here you have a negative cash flow switch. So this says D16 is less than zero. D16 is our cash flow. Um, this is the input up here. It's gonna be the same as row 28, and D16 is less than zero. So that's a true uh, that accurate that that statement is accurate and as we go across um, we'll notice that it becomes false when the cash flow turns positive and that's generally how switches work they're binary true or false statements if I were to multiply this by one I would whoops uh, put those in parentheses if I were to multiply that by one I would get a zero and that zero would be correct if I were to multiply the true by one um, I would get a one and so that's sort of how we get to multiply all of this stuff out that's the logic behind it and so real quick we have our annual rates uh, go back up to the inputs the four percent and the 9%, we want to be really careful here. Uh, the first inclination you might have is if we want to go from annual to daily, we'd say, oh, four divided by 365. That's not going to give you the correct answer. What we're actually going to do is use an exponential equation. So the daily borrowing rate is actually one plus 4%. Um, raised to one divided by 365 minus one. You're going to see that formula over and over and over again in, for, in finance. It's just compound growth, uh, Kager really. And that's, that's honestly what the MIRR is. And we're gonna get to that in just a second. Um, so if we go back down, We've got our borrowing rate daily and our reinvestment rate. And at this point, we've converted all of our dates and timing into days. We have days from the beginning of analysis. This allows us to compute present value. And days from end of analysis. This allows us to compute future value. And we have switches. So we know when cash flow is negative, such as right here. And we know when cash flow is positive, such as right here. And so that's kind of the crux of the MIRR formula. Um, you take the future value of the positive cash flows at the reinvestment rate, and the, you divide that by the present value of the negative cash flows at the borrowing rate, and raised to one divided by 365 minus one. And so what we're gonna do to break that out even more and make it more simple is to create a factor and so what we're doing with a factor if you look at this formula this is a present value equation so the present value equals what should be the future value right um, divided by one plus the borrowing rate raised to the number of days to be discounted in that period and we use one because we want to see what the actual impact is um, and also 
it allows us to use the sum product formula to just bring all of the cash flows together and I'm going to get to that in just a moment. So borrowing factor, you go across and again feel free to download this workbook. You can see everything, you can sort of look at all of the formulas but these are just basic present value and future value formulas. We do the same thing for future value except we're using the daily reinvestment rate which is going to be um, D38 or the other input side D10. So back down uh, we have the factors that is kind of the brunt of the complex calculations so the next thing we want to do is to use some product and some product what you're essentially doing is you're multiplying a number of a number of arrays a number of single sort of columns in an array um, and summing them together so some product of D40 what this is essentially saying is you're going to multiply the borrowing factor for period zero and which should be one and the negative cash flow switch and the cash flows uh, and then the entire array for that and so it's going to sum the result of each of these columns into one number uh, which is negative nine hundred and fifty eight dollars and seventy cents and that is your present value of the negative cash flows when we put it into the equation we're going to have to multiply that by negative one in order to make it um, make the formula work because it's negative cash flows so present value of negative cash flows subtract out or multiply out the negative but future value of positive cash flows it's the exact same thing you're going up you're taking the reinvestment factor for that period multiplying it by the cash flow switch for positive it's false here so this is going to result in zero and multiply by the cash flow so this is going to be zero everything in these columns for the reinvestment factor or for the future ah, for the future value is going to be zero because of this switch that's what sort of allows us to use logic and create a flexible model so once it goes to here though the 2.22 times the true times the 400 that's going to be added to all of the rest of these cash flows multiplied by the reinvestment factor so we come to the end of our calculations we have the present value we have the future value and the total number of days which we have already found up here it's just the end of the analysis period minus the beginning of the analysis period we're using dates there because Excel computes that in days and you go down divide by 365 and you get the number of years and so that's actually going to be the n in our compound growth formula so we go to outputs our calculated MIRR as you can see to the side right here is C44 the future value of positive cash flows divided by the present value of negative cash flows raised to 1 divided by 13.25 years minus 1 now we use years here because we've taken the present and future value that's denominated in years so even though for each of these calculations beforehand we, we converted to daily rates and all of that um, this is where we go back and discount to a yearly figure so Excel's MIRR formula as you'll see here does not compute the correct rate but our XMIRR formula does so when I switch over to the VBA code behind it we use option explicit this means that we have to declare each of the variables it's just best coding practice it means that no variable goes unused num equals the cash flow count so that's essentially just saying this is our series uh, this is sort of the number of you know periods that you're going to be computing over so it's it's calculating this essentially um, cash flows this would be one two three four five it's sort of an offset of this um, 
and then you go down to daily borrow, calculate that, daily reinvest rate. We've done both of those already. You see that up here in these exact calculations right here. And in VBA, this is kind of key. You want to set the present value and the future value to zero, uh, especially as they will be the variables that will be like the output. Um, you want to set those to zero just to make sure that there's nothing else set in there. VBA can be weird sometimes. And then the crux of this user defined formula revolves around a for next loop. So for i equals one to the number of periods that cash flows are being calculated. So one is the beginning, num is, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6, 15. Num would be 15 here. Days count, we set up the exact same formulas for days from the beginning of the analysis and days at the end of analysis, right here, days count two. Then we create a borrowing factor and a reinvestment factor. And if the cash flow is less than or equal to zero, then we have the formula. And if cash flow of i, i being the period that it's calculating, so for period i, for period one, and then two, and then three, um, next i. So that, that's how the whole sort of for next works. It does all of the calculations, and then it will add that to the next uh, for present value and so years would be days count divided by 365 we did that down here total days divided by 365 it's going to be 13.2548 and xmirr equals the future value divided by the negative present value raised to one divided by the number of years years being a decimal or a number with a decimal uh, minus one and that is your x m i r r formula it's also exactly the same formula as the compound annual growth rate if you sort of notice that and that about wraps it up for our first one you can download this workbook at the link below and we look forward to doing more. Please comment if you have any feedback. But other than that, we look forward to the next time.